forget that um, for some <laughs> reason. I always forget to hit record and then I don't get everything. People are like, where's my recording? So now I've hit record and we can go ahead and get started. So uh, we all know that the, the competition, convention, dance industry as a whole has been rocked by a number of um, predatory, um, sexual predatory behaviors by uh, artists, teachers, choreographers, uh, convention owners, studio directors, um, and dancers alike. Uh, we have heard these stories come out. We've been very heartbroken as more and more victims come forward, um, courageously come forward to talk about the experiences that they've had and the trauma that they have experienced as a result of some of the um, absolutely um, horrific things that have happened to them as they have either been assistants, students, uh, colleagues um, in this competition and convention space. Unfortunately, what we have not seen a lot of is action. Um, action uh, to make these spaces safer. Um, of course, we do want to um, mention to anyone that um, that if you have experienced trauma or if you are feeling triggered at all uh, during this show, that you step away and protect your peace. Um, we're not going to talk too much about um, about actual. Um, actual accusations, but we are gonna talk a lot about how we can prevent them. So if at any point you feel uncomfortable or you feel like um, you um, you want to step away, please do and protect your peace. We definitely invite that. These will be recorded. You can come back at Facebook on Apollo Performance at any time um, and watch the episode um, whenever it is, it is safe for you to do so. So um, we have not seen a lot of change. We have seen the same convention teachers, mm -hmm. the same choreographers being hired over and over again in studios in conventions, uh, I have heard myself from parents that, oh, we're just going to ignore that. Um, you know, we're wow. just going to keep keep moving forward. Um, and you know, parents have the right to make choices that for their children. Um, uh, I don't even know how to complete that sentence. They have the 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 right to make choices for their children as they wish. But as teachers, dance educators, studio owners, we want to make sure that we're doing the best on our end for our students. Um, so we're going to talk about a few ways today um, that we can do that um, and come together as dance educators, teachers, studio owners, competition owners, and make those spaces safer. Um, as always, this is Beyond the Steps. You will see me looking to the left, to the right, up and down. That's because I'm monitoring a number of different monitors here to make sure that everybody on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Zoom is including the conversation. You might notice that I'm missing my amazing co-host today, uh, Bree Zabrowski. She is in Shark Tank heaven. Uh, if you did not get a chance to watch Apollo Performance, did receive a deal from Lori on Shark Tank last Friday. Um, so as you can imagine, now that everybody knows about this amazing product all over the world, um, they are getting inundated with people with congratulatory messages as well as orders and wanting this amazing product. So uh, she is off handling that. I am super happy to support and do this solo show um, today without her, but am totally missing her and wanting her to get back as soon as possible. So Brie, please come back. Uh, I can't wait to have you back as my co-host. I'm going to talk um, to about Avisha uh, a little bit because uh, I think it's important that we start and know her background so that we can understand why she's here and what a great resource she's going to be to help us. Um, Vahisha Hassan is a faith rooted organizer moving in the intersections of faith, social justice, and mental health. Health. She's the executive director of Movement in Faith, a project of Transform Network. She's a powerful public speaker, transformative facilitator, social justice trainer, minister, and writer with a deeply prophetic voice and imagination for how faith communities can be an active part of healing and collective liberation. She's the director of the SEAL initiatives at American Baptist College in Nashville. Vish is also a core team member of Track for Movements, which is trauma response and crisis care, providing support, supportive tools for wellness for those who labor in freedom and liberation. She also serves as an associate minister at Christ Missionary, Missionary Baptist Church under Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart, senior pastor, where she was licensed and ordained in um, June 2019. Uh, Vahisha holds a dual Master's of Divinity and a Master's of Mental Health Counseling with an Education Specialist Certification from Gardner-Webb University here in North Carolina, and a Bachelor's Degree in Communications with a Concentration in Interpersonal Organization from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, who you may have heard of during March Madness recently. Um, but we're not going to go there. We're just going to keep going. We're going to roll on over that. She's also a native of Charlotte, North Carolina, and a graduate of Independence High School, which is how we met over 20 years ago. Uh, in addition to pinning book reviews, journal articles, online publications, and writing a bachelor's curriculum in applied psychology, she curated and co-edited three editions of Recipient's A Lenten Devotional for Dismantling White Supremacy from 2018 to 2020. Welcome, Dahisha, back to Beyond the Steps. 
Good to be here as always. I love this space. I love the, the, the conversations that y'all are having. I love the needle that is being pushed and moved forward. I love that different voices are amplified and highlighted. I love the transformation, the impact. I am always grateful to be here with y'all. Well, thank you. Thank you. Bahisha was here last season with us uh, talking about using breath work uh, as a form of restorative practice and uh, and self-care. So uh, we are happy to have her back to talk about another wonderful thing that she does here, which is organizing. Uh, so speaking of that, I want to start with, uh, with uh, organizing. That's a term that is very usefully used now. Uh, I would venture to say overused um, at times, and a lot of people don't quite have an idea of it's ex- actually what organizing or organizing is. Oh my gosh, I can't get things out it's because Bree's not here. Um, and you have done a lot of organizing work. We've done a lot of organizing work together uh, in a number of spaces. So let's just start with the basics. What is organizing, and how is it important to create real change around an issue? Uh, Absolutely. So organizing is almost like collectivizing. Like, think about that. Like, let's say you are outraged, you are concerned, you identify an issue. That is amazing and wonderful. What you want to do is get with other people. Who are are outraged. Right. right. (laughs) You want to get some like-raged, like-hearted folk together, and you want to use collective energy, collective energy. power to move something forward to create change so this is a vehicle a way a modality to bring about uh whatever type of change that you are striving for Mm -hmm. and i think that's where a lot of people feel overwhelmed because they are individually outraged oh my goodness how could this be how could this be somebody should do something Mm -hmm. guess what somebody is you somebody is all of us that's absolutely right somebody is you and the other person who's sitting at home going somebody should do something and somebody should do something and I when I look at organizing I think of it as the gathering of all the people who said somebody should do something (laughs) we are the somebodies yeah we are the somebodies it's all the somebodies that come together uh when we think when we think somebody should do something so uh that's a that's a great a, a great thing uh the dance community is very small but it's very large at the same time. And for mm-hmm. some reason, it's very hard for us to find the other somebody should do some things. Mm. Um, so hopefully as we finish the show today, we'll have some ideas on how we find those somebodies should yep. do some things um, and, and how to pull them together. So in, in your work, I have to imagine that you find uh, so many people who are unwilling to quote unquote, get involved. You're kind of already involved, but get involved. <laughs> Yes. Um, because sometimes the issue hasn't directly touched them. And when I say directly, I mean, hit their home, the house that they live in, their nuclear family, their, Correct. you know, their friends' nuclear families. Um, so are those people who are unwilling to get involved our target audience for this kind of work? Or are we really looking for a chorus of the willing? So a chorus of the people who are like, somebody to do something, or should we be doing some convincing of people? So I think that's going to be by design. So there are, you you need to know your role or at least define, begin to define your role and your goal in organizing. So Mm -hmm. your question is kind of a first place. So for example, for me in some of the work that I do, I am very clear on who who I am speaking to, who I am attempting attempting to to organize, to move, to bring into the work, to bring a part of this. And then there's a whole set of people that are not for me. So Mm -hmm. I don't don't Mm -hmm. actually think that there's a wrong answer to this. It's just, Mm -hmm. you need to decide that with whatever collective group you're working with. So meaning if you are the folks who are like, I need to move the unmovable people, Mm-hmm. It, then then get on it that that's mm-hmm. that becomes your role so you're not going to go with folks who would already sign up who are already going to be responsive mm-hmm. who are already no those are you want the unmovable folks but if you mm-hmm. want to move the people who maybe are are just beginning or budding to mm-hmm. look at this issue to take on a thing so you actually get to all of you get to determine who that is for you uh, mm-hmm. just just this past weekend I was speaking to someone who was running for office and he was talking talking about his story and how this this was a black man and he talked about how in his what he calls his upbringing he wasn't mm-hmm. aware 
of some of the ways that race played out in different settings. Mm -hmm. And so, and so what, and so he he was like, so now he goes directly to impacted black folk and he's trying Mm -hmm. to, he's trying to support them, get solidarity things, move them. And then Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what about the folks that you left behind to do this? Right. Mm -hmm. What about the folks that you grew up with that have a very similar upbringing background as what you identify as? What would happen if you went and went and you went and talked to those folks? Because Mm -hmm. those those people you have shared, shared um, experiences, shared context, shared cultures in some way, go move them. They might Mm -hmm. they might move more quickly with and for you and from your voice than they Mm -hmm. will from me. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had like a military background. He had like a couple of different things. And so and so I think that question is important. And that comes up a little bit. Um, a little bit. We'll talk about some power analysis and power mapping. But mm-hmm. in this rudimentary beginning place, you do need to determine who you want to reach, who you mm-hmm. want to move. And, and, and also recognize there is a difference between reaching and moving. Reaching, Mm -hmm. reaching is communicating with, having a conversation, educating, Mm -hmm. sharing, but moving is they, they were at a place and then they now are activated to do something else. So if you're looking to activate people or are you looking to, to educate people, to reach people? And that is two Mm -hmm. different things, but yeah, so ultimately you get to decide, all of you get to decide and there is no wrong answer. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to be made feel to feel bad <laughs> about moving the people who are around you or to feel bad about moving the people who are, you know, not willing to be moved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a very important distinction, because I do think in organizing people get frustrated when they're trying to do the wrong thing with the wrong people and it's mm-hmm. not working um, because there's definitely different strategies for both. Correct. Um, there's there's definitely very very different strategies actually. Um, Ve- um, very home. different because mm-hmm. the the unmovable people will take a lot of that's the timeline for that and the relationship and the infrastructure and all the things that 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 is long term work and that is great and we need that. But if you have if you have a shorter term goal, then that's then you need to assign that to a different set of folks. You still need mm-hmm. to do it, but you need to allocate that in a way that makes sense. For those of you who are just joining us, we are talking with Bahisha Hassan about how we can work together to demand change uh, in our convention space um, through organizing work. So we're going to give you some super applicable strategies a little bit later. Right now, we're kind of setting the baseline for um, what it is that that we need that we need to know about organizing and how we get started. Uh, if you have questions, please put them in the chat here on Facebook, uh, here on Instagram for my peeps here, and we will get them out to Bahisha as soon as we possibly can um, and get her to answer those. So I, I want to talk about the discomforts that come with taking a stand, because I think that's very important. It's something that people don't understand and that our viewers really need to know so that they can be prepared and be prepared with more resolve uh, when they enter into the into the work of uh, disrupting, which is which is kind of what this is called in, in disrupting. So I want to talk about the disruption to your normal routine that might happen when you have become outraged about something. And you have decided to either withdraw support or choose new new things to buy, patronize, go to. What does that look like? What can that look like to your normal routine? How can that disrupt your life? <laughs> I think the first place is convenience, mm-hmm. um, ease. We are we curate. If you even just think about our social media and our at this point, like how we engage the world, we are able to curate that in a way that feels good to us, mm-hmm. right? And so the minute that you begin to disrupt, I mean, disrupt means that you're 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 altering a system in any way that that's not going to feel good. It's going right. to be uncomfortable. I mean, think of teething. This is teething, mm-hmm. people, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so nobody is. I mean, there there can be a type of pain involved, a type of inconvenience. So it mean it means if you no longer buy the thing, engage the thing. If this is a type of financial, economic type of disruption, then it may take you longer to get mm-hmm. the things get that things you need. need. It may not be the exact same thing that you want. And I'm going to make a, because of my faith base, I'm going to make an example, um, a churchy example, right? 
listen, there's somebody's mama somewhere that sit in the same seat at the church since mm-hmm. she walked into the church, right? So she's going into the same church. She's getting the exact same worship experience. But if she moves her chair, that is a completely different, there can be an attachment to that, mm-hmm. right? So you might be able to get the exact same product or the exact same service or a similar something, but do it from a different orientation, a different mm-hmm. position. And that can feel not the best for folks. Mm -hmm. And then if you begin to verbalize, vocalize, move in a way that that is different, let me tell you something. You're you're not just going to put out disruption, but then you are going to receive disruption, right? Mm-hmm. So folks are folks are not going to be excited about what you're doing. Folks are not going to agree with you. There there is going to be disruption for you, even as you are putting disruption out. Mm-hmm. So there needs to be some level of preparation for that. And and I will say, because I am not a like respectability kind of serving person but what I will say is you need to decide to some extent how you would like to respond in these instances so you know do you cuss a little do you cuss a lot are you really even in the way that you're going to respond you know Mm -hmm. Lisa and I have been best friends since ninth grade you gonna get a different response between the two of us that's That's true (laughs) don't think you're coming for the same person because you're not you are not coming for the same person. Now, now to be clear, you gonna you gonna walk away limping. I mean, like, well, right. excuse me, not limping. I don't want to be ableist in the situation, right. but you are gonna walk away cut. Like you are gonna right. get cut somewhere. <laughs> but the way Melissa is gonna cut you, and the way that I'm gonna cut you is gonna be too. But you still cut, right? So all of us, you in your own agency, in your own identity, and knowing who you are and how you would like to show up authentically, your most authentic self. You don't have to perform a certain way to respond. You don't have mm-hmm. to perform uh, any of it, right? But mm-hmm. you just need to have some, you feel good about it when you, you know, go to sleep at night. So right. that disruption is not just being put out. And I think, Melissa, that's one of the things that that is tough for people to face. They think they're doing the right thing. They think they feel good about the, the, the where they have landed on this issue. Mm-hmm. And then they're shocked. When people don't it, are like, yay. Listen, <laughs> right. when the pom-poms don't come out, you're like, wait, what? I'm I'm on the side of good. I'm on mm-hmm. the side of right. I am walking in the way that I mm-hmm. know is great. And folks, there are going to be a set of people who are not here for that. Right. I mean, because if everybody was for it, we wouldn't have an issue. To we fight. wouldn't need the disruption, the organization, or right. none of the harm would be happening. We wouldn't be traumatized. All of mm-hmm. these things would not be available, present, and rampant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There are actually people who disagree with you, even when you think you're on the side of right, because they also mm-hmm. think they are on the side. Of they right. totally think. They totally think. And that's hard to mm-hmm. to imagine, especially in a case where we're talking about um, sexual predatory behaviors uh, against children or even adults. Like it's hard to believe that there are people who believe that this type of behavior is harmless or it's just what's always happened or it wasn't that bad. And that's what I was going to say. It's that motivation piece, that internal motivation piece. And that's where some, some shifting has to happen in all of us. Right. Because most folks, not all, most folks are going to agree that any type of sexual predator is a problem, particularly Mm -hmm. among who we see as the most vulnerable, which is children. Mm -hmm. Most folks can land there. Most. I want you to hear that. Most. Okay. But for those, but you might agree there, but your agreement may stop there because if someone says, but for ticket sales, we need these mm-hmm. ticket sales though. Mm-hmm. So the ticket sales begins to outweigh the motivation that yep. you share or the name recognition outweighs the motivation that you share or some personal loyalty yes. outweighs the That's motivation that listen, that personal, that personal relationship, that personal loyalty, they might know that this person is a hot on fire, raggedy, harmful, traumatic mess. Mm-hmm. And they see the humanity in them mm-hmm. and they are still trying to figure out how to be their friend or to maintain the relationship and definitely proximity that they have. Y'all, proximity will take us up out of here in our decision making. Mm-hmm. So all of those things are true. Wow. That, I think you you hit the nail on the head with the, you know, the loyalty. This is a 
organ, organization. This is a um, space, community. the dance, a community. Thank you. And you said community. it was small. You said yeah. it was small. I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is the way that things are able to continue happening in a space because even when they are human, we are also human. So there are mm -hmm. so many, and as a social scientist, this is where I live, right? Mm -hmm. As a study of human behavior, we have to also acknowledge not just the human behavior of those who are doing the harm, but the human behavior that are holding up the, their ability mm -hmm. to do that to harm. do the harm. And, yeah. and that takes that takes some really soul work in us, some mm -hmm. some 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 remaking, reclaiming, massaging, redoing mm. to really frame out. And that goes back to that authentic space. But you got to know what you're being authentic to. Are you authentic to that shared space of this cannot be? I mm. will no longer be a part of this in no way, shape or form, even when it's inconvenient, even mm. when I will lose relationships, even if I lose revenue. Right. Right. And that, that's the resolve and the commitment that I wanted people to understand in this mm -hmm. specific segment, that when you go into this, you can't just go, oh my goodness, I lost five students. I got to go. Um, you know, you, you have to be committed to it. And I think that's where the, 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 the resolve stops a lot of times there when that pocketbook gets hit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and people see that there's loss of revenue. And not um, to make light of it, it's an understandable, it's a, right, it's a, concern, the, the, right. the cost benefit analysis, right, of these mm -hmm. decisions that we make. So then you might also need to do some planning on how you can undergo, how you can still feed your family, but mm -hmm. also how your, how your, how your moral center stays center. So how mm -hmm. can both of those places show up authentically in a way that meets your needs? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who are just joining us, we do have some people over here on Facebook that are just now logging on. We are talking about how we can work together um, to demand change in our convention and competition space um, so that we can stop uh, the sexual predatory behavior that has been happening in our industry for many, many years that's just now uh, coming to public light. Uh, and uh, also, you know, make demands that, you know, the public light shine brighter. There are a lot of news organizations, media outlets in our industry that refuse to report on, uh, to write about, to mention uh, the um, allegations and, you know, actual convictions uh, of people that have been uh, participating in this type of behavior. Um, and they also don't highlight the stories and amplify the voices of the people who have been impacted. So uh, we want to make some, some demands there as well, that the narrative not be skewed and distorted uh, by a, a media that chooses not to, not to report in a way that, um, that shows integrity. So a lot of people are outraged. A lot of people are in the, somebody needs to do something space, Vahisha. A lot of, there's a lot of people impacted of all ages, all genders, all, um, you know, uh, positions in the, in the industry. There's a lot of people with a lot of trauma, um, but it's yeah. overwhelming <laughs> when you go, what am I supposed to do? So I know you have some key elements that you want to talk about. I think there were three of them uh, yes. that can kind of point us in the right direction. What are those three things? And we're going to delve into them in detail each, but just generally what are those three things? Got you. So overarching is political education, power mapping, and direct action. So those are, okay. those are your three, political okay. education, uh, power mapping, and direct action. And these, these work together they don't necessarily have to have an order. It's hard for an organizer to say that out loud. I was going to um, say, because uh, <laughs> I started to put them out of order when I was going to talk about them. I was like, I can't put them out of order. Yeah, because there, because there, there, there is a uh, in a, in a beautiful you know utopian place inside joke. Um, in a beautiful <laughs> utopian place, there there is an order. Well, in in the utopia, we wouldn't need any of it, but here we are. Right. Uh, but political education would be what you would want to have first, and then you would want there to be some power mapping from there, and then direct action from there. Mm -hmm. But also realize that one of the goals of direct action is to amplify and bring life and voice um, 
to folks. So sometimes mm-hmm. the first that the first time people hear about it is in a direct action place is because of direct action. So mm-hmm. then there are a lot of people who might start a direct action and then right. have, they have to work a little bit circular. And, and there's there's a circular piece to it. They so they might have to go back to the political education, back to the power mapping. And I want to call it circular and not even just like a linear step one, step two, step three, because let me tell you something, political education is forever. Mm-hmm. Okay. There is no, but, oh, you now you, you check. No, you know, you I know. Got right. I got, that, I got my political education. Now we're on to uh, power method. No, it doesn't work that way. So, <laughs> so these things are going to intertwine. They interrelate in a lot of ways. Uh, just right there. I, and again, back to my hashtag therapist, just how did it feel in your body? to hear political education. Mm -hmm. I I want folks to even like pay attention to what happened in their in their bodies for Mm -hmm. the word political Political. education to even land on them, right? Mm -hmm. Because so many of us have been conditioned to to separate what we what has been identified to us as what is political, what are politics. Mm And the majority of people think of politics immediately as what we would say is electoral politics, politics but that's is not all politics, y'all. Like, what are we doing? Right. Mm-hmm. So it has been so simplified and I'm jumping around a little bit, but there's a power analysis to that. Why has it been so simplified in a mm-hmm. way that makes you back away from it? Mm-hmm. Who, is, who is served by you not wanting to be political? If the word comes out your mouth and you feel good about it, like, oh, I'm not political or I'm not very political or I don't really do politics. These are regular phrases that we say to ourselves mm-hmm. and we say to others, but we need to think about that. Think mm-hmm. about why that is and who that serves and who that does not serve right right? all of our decisions are impactful yeah there's politics I have a politics around food I have a politics around exercise I have a politics around how I would like to parent I have politics around how I would like for my marriage to be like there's politics of everything that is correct because the I mean root you get into just the the root word etymology rhetoric like is policy right (laughs) So the, right. it's just, it's an agreed upon way to do the thing about the thing, like in the most simplified <laughs> term. Right. Right? And, and here's where I get concerned, um, back to the organizer self and the hashtag therapist self, you have a policy because it means you care about an issue. So the what, what makes my skin crawl when people say that they're not political is I'm immediately looking like, so you have no care policy, or right? concern mm-hmm. about any of the issues that impact every waking and sleeping moment of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. everything in our life everything in our life has a policy and a politic Mm -hmm. attached to it there are books that says the body is is political the body is politic Mm -hmm. if you have a body right you are you are inherently political in the current system that is set up for us to be Mm -hmm. to be clear and frank right so how do you begin to embrace the places that you being political and wanting to um to have certain types of political education is is an expression of care is an Mm -hmm. expression of community is an expression of solidarity is an expression Mm -hmm. of activation of concern that you want to be a part of the goodness It's, Mm -hmm. it's not just the evil place I ain't saying mm-hmm. it ain't no evil available, but it's not right. just the evil place. But you like, I mean, in a in a day where I was on a dating app and you know, people come into <laughs> the thing, I'm just saying there may have been a day or time it may have been that a I day was on a time. dating app. It ain't today, not because I had no boo, but just because I ain't looking. So <laughs> but if and and there would be some fine human and they would come through there and it would say under their thing, I'm not political swipe. No, we ain't got nothing. We listen, I would rather you have differing politics than me than none than to claim none. This mm-hmm. false, this false sense of neutrality only hurts people, y'all. Mm-hmm. And and I really I know that's hard to to land, but I need you to hear that. It mm-hmm. first of all, it's false. 
it's not real because you, you have do. some politics you about have, something. You yeah. got a politic about something somewhere. Like that's the deal. And for it, that false neutrality and moving in that way, it truly really harms people. And it feeds, it feeds actual harmful politics and policies and structures that impact great harm and trauma on folks. Mm-hmm. So if you're talking specifically about this um, convention place, this harm, this bodily harm of mm-hmm. children, can you imagine how your body would then feel for you to say, I don't have care about that? Mm-hmm. That is that is the in, that is the mm-hmm. message of saying I am not uh, political. I, I, I have no opinions, feelings or engagement in this in any way. Mm-hmm. And I do not mm-hmm. personally have any little humans that came forth from my body or otherwise. Uh, but th- this still feels deeply personal because I'm a human. And this is impacting mm-hmm. other humans mm-hmm. and specifically vulnerable humans. So political education is, is key. You got to figure out what that is. So I would say that with the framework uh, that you have, Melissa, for Apollo and, and um, Turning Point, to set up, to bring in folks who could do some of that education, that needs to happen. And it needs mm-hmm. to be different voices across a little bit of time and, and archived in a way that people could get to them at any time, like almost have a little bit of a curriculum, right? Mm-hmm. You know, your dance instructors, y'all got curriculums, y'all got plans, you figure out how to get all the way to the end, right? You can't just go to the choreography, you got to start at the at right. the motion, the mm-hmm. right? You got to start the debate. So this is your basics place. This is your first position. Mm-hmm. It, this is how you hold your core. This, mm-hmm. this is, you know, in language that's relatable, that is what is needed. So there needs to be some political education, not just so you get the language right and not just so you read the right book, even though please, please get to know the language, please read something. Right, read, right. Read, read more and do better. Okay, that's my motto. But, <laughs> but you want to have shared language so that mm-hmm. as you get to the rest of these things, you, you are collectivizing power and collectivizing mm-hmm. your efforts, putting mm-hmm. it together. That's when it's organizing. And then the, oh, go ahead. When we talk about political education, are we in, in- we're starting that process of providing political political education, or are we shaping polit- people's political education? Like, there's a both. Okay, both, and 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 to deny anything else would be ridiculous. And so, I, and I'm not saying indoctrination. That's right. That's that's not right. What that's I'm what saying. I want to get to. Like, yeah, I don't want no. it to feel like you should feel this way about this. That's no. not where we're. That's not where we're going. No, it, it is now. You should feel a like something. <laughs> That's the that's probably the non-negotiable place, right? Mm-hmm. You should feel a like something, but I think political education is more a presentation of mm-hmm. of what is happening, what um what may not be seen. You know, everybody always shows that iceberg thing. You see the top of the iceberg yeah, on top, it, yeah. and then underneath, political education is the underneath because there's mm-hmm. so there's so much not seen and not known there. Mm-hmm. So the political education is a presentation of these mm-hmm. type of things. But to be clear, back to, not back to, but forward to this power analysis, anybody presenting information to you has a motivation and also has a um, an, an agenda in some way, right? So some of, some of that power analysis is to receive that information in and then begin to d- make decisions for yourself, mm-hmm. right? So you should, you should still come in, um, you know, the preachy theological side of me says to have a hermeneutic of suspicion. So mm-hmm. I come at everything like the first, uh, like with the side eye. Mm-hmm. Right. So, <laughs> so like even, even like book definitions of things, Webster's definition, it was at Oxford, all the different mm-hmm. dictionaries and the things I, I did a presentation one time and presented a definition of racism that totally countered the at the time the uh, the dictionary version and mm-hmm. so by the time folks were finished they were like and I was like well where did you get that definition from who published mm-hmm. it who who mm-hmm. got to decide who who was on the publishing committee to decide that this was the agreed upon mm-hmm. definition like did they look like the impacted people were they the people who uphold the things like and so by the time I broke all of that down they were like well what do we believe now nothing mm-hmm. right <laughs> 
right. and, and I don't mean, but obviously I'm a whole reverend. I don't mean believe in nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, the, the examination, the navigation right. and examination of, of where you land in what is truth and even understanding that truth evolves. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah. yeah, that truth evolves, right? And right. so so that power analysis, I kind of described it in what we're doing, but I want to be more specific for the dance convention. So let's say you do some political education. Political education would need to include funding sources. Who, who, how, how do conventions get funded? How did they start? What's the history of them? What other issues were already available mm-hmm. that that led to other types of problems? And does this line up with like the, the model of how that happened, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, I, and you could pick a something, if you name something like, um, let's, let's take like a hypersexualization of children in mm-hmm. dance space, right? So if, if this was a problem already, how was that, how did that begin? And right. then how did it evolve? How was it addressed? Like do some study, just think of political education as study. And mm-hmm. then if you do some of that study, when you do the power analysis, it's then like, okay, how do we determine who is powerful in this situation? Mm-hmm. And what I always love as an organizer is that most people eventually get to that they are actually the, power the powerful person. person. Yeah. And, and, that, and that tends to blow people's brains because we have been given who is powerful like the Mm -hmm. so the folks who have the name plates are the folks who are appointed Mm -hmm. as the powerful people or designated named as the powerful people again part of the analysis is who does that serve who does that not serve so i i know what i know dance um i know dance company owners i bet you know who's powerful you know who's Mm -hmm. powerful at a dance company it ain't the owner It's the mama, daddy, parents of the children and then Mm -hmm. the children, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the powerful people because you are going to craft, change, and make decisions based on what is going to bring them in, what is going to keep them happy, what is going to keep them there, and also how do you do your best work with them so Mm -hmm. that they are the powerful people. You Mm -hmm. might be the decision maker, but they are the powerful people. So I I totally about to go off on a tangent. We do have to get back on at some point, but the decision maker and the powerful person are two, can be. They can be. Two different people. And I think that that's where we are falling short um, as as the powerful people in this situation. We think, okay, I really want to go to this convention. My, My students are looking forward to this convention. They go every single year. Every time they have a great time, they go, mm-hmm. they love this choreographer. He is amazing. He just, they just light up when he, when he teaches a class. But this dude just got accused of, you know, Multiple. sexual intimidation yeah. mm-hmm. against assistants and, you know, students. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And you kind of feel pressure because you're like, if I don't go, then my powered people are going to leave. Mm-hmm. But if I do go, I'm using my power to endorse the convention that rehired this person. It's like you're in a sandwich of you I'm are. the powerful mm-hmm. person in making this decision, but the powerful people who make decisions for me. Mm-hmm. It's like a lose lose situation, you feel like. It's very complex. And to deny that complexity is also not helpful, right? Like that's mm-hmm. that's spending a lot of time. No, like that's where we go back to when you first asked. What then happens? How do you feel? There are risks and you will lose something. You risk Mm -hmm. something and you will lose something. Mm -hmm. But again, as part of the powerful folks, you get to decide and determine some of that risk and some of that loss. And so Mm -hmm. the organizing piece comes in where it becomes not just you. That's where the organizing comes in. So Mm -hmm. if if, if you feel like, I'm going to, these people are going to walk away from me, or I'm going to lose being in that space or whatever it means to lose being in that space. But if you organize the people in that space, you organize with the people in that space, then you actually shift the space as Mm -hmm. opposed to whether you vacate it or whether it is even a space that other people now want to come into. What Mm -hmm. if you, what if you, 
not saying it's instantaneous or it happens tomorrow, but what if you create a space that then doesn't have this element and you give people alternatives, alternative spaces to be in where it doesn't have to be, have that. To be that way, but yeah. it, it, it takes enough people to make that shift to legitimize that space. Like, let's be real, right? right. So if you're an established convention pro- project, It's going to take time for another convention to be legitimized. But Mm -hmm. if you organize people around that, then you got a thing. Mm -hmm. Or if you organize enough people to visibly and vocally Mm -hmm. remove, vacate, or alter a space in some way, then it puts pressure on that space to change. Change, right, right. And that's where, I think that's where we are Mm -hmm. as an industry and we can't take the step forward Mm -hmm. um because of what you said like you have to realize you have to take a loss in order to do this and is the loss of the safety and innocence and you know health of your students a greater loss than the loss of revenue Mm -hmm. and you have to make that decision because we are not banding together as a studio space to say we're not going to your convention yeah because Mary Lou's studio is like, I can't afford to move. I can't afford. My 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 students come here just to go there because just they know there. because they right. know that that space is a stepping stone platform to do to reach whatever the right. rest of their goals are. Right? right. And that's that's the reality and, and the, the realness of that. And so I get that. But what I love about this space that I don't want to lose, even as we're talking about uh, talking about organizing, an aspect of organizing is like cultural organizing. And this would take a whole nother platform to talk about that. But what I want to focus on with this cultural organizing piece is all of you are creatives. You're mm-hmm. creatives. You take into organizing who you already are. Mm-hmm. Even when I was thinking last night before I was going to sleep about this, I had like a whole like vision dream. I was like falling asleep and I was like, oh man, it would be so amazing. Could you imagine a flash mob that 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 danced off of like politicized lyrics and was a visual choreographed display of your resistance to what this is. And let me tell you something, you go viral enough at every convention and do this and make a political statement about the vulnerabilities of these young bodies, conventions are going to shift because they don't want you to come do that flash mob at they joint, right? right? They don't right. want, <laughs> so right. back, to, back to the who, the decision makers, like, so mm-hmm. they're the owners in that scenario, but they're gonna at some point have to make decisions based on the dancers themselves, the mm-hmm. parentals themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So what if you did a, like, and again, that's why I'm saying, be authentic in who you are. So that's the piece where I've shifted into what could look like direct action. So I think Mm -hmm. one of the things that was brought up was like petitioning. Petitioning Mm -hmm. is good for a couple of reasons. It it, it shows how, if you you can get enough folks, it shows how many folks are interested in this issue. That's Mm -hmm. really what it's saying. We signed a petition to agree that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So you get enough folks to sign such a petition, but then you also collect all that data and information and Mm -hmm. that becomes your organized body. So when you say, Melissa, that y'all are not um, across studios, across geographies, across some of this, you don't know how to do this together. um, That's the easiest way is a it, it sends a message to the folks but it also collects the people who, collects the, who are do wanting something. to be right that's the do something folks mm-hmm. we don't know what to do this is, seems bigger but than all of us are, right but here we are we at least have showed up and not showed up with i'm not political right. i i don't care about this right that's enough of a step and you move those people you mm-hmm. organize those people. But if 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 you so that that feels like a good step. But then what if once you figure out who the folks are, like don't just leave it as a sign-up sheet. Reach out, continue to reach out, and then that's who you then do political education with. So see it. So the petition to some extent, that's an action. The petition is an action, but it collects the want to do somebody people. Then mm-hmm. you need to do some political education with those mm-hmm. folks then you want to keep the petition going then you're going to need to keep doing some political the education, political education right. then you're going to do some analysis of 
Who are these convention owners? Who are these folks who are doing the harm? And, and, and I wanna say with power mapping, which is a little different from power analysis, the mapping is what are ways to get to them? So mm -hmm. case in point, um, if somebody wanted to move you and Brie, mm -hmm. they wanted to organize you and Brie, they wanted to get to y'all, but they have no space to do that. Mm -hmm. But they are went to elementary school with me, mm -hmm. right? Power mapping would say, well, I went to elementary school with Vahisha. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to Vahisha and say, man, I saw Brie on the things with the, you know, whatever. And how like that could be a way to get to y'all. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm saying power mapping is not just who is powerful, but what are the how you get to them and relationships and pathways to get to them in an impactful way. And mm -hmm. I mean, obvious things are who plays golf with who, who, mm -hmm. who drinks the scotch with who, who, mm -hmm. who goes to church with who you want to talk about mm -hmm. some faith organizing. One of the first things we do is where do they worship? Go to, right. And, right. and that, of course, is across all worships, all faith uh, ways that faith show up in the world. Where do they worship? And mm -hmm. that's an organized body right there. Do I know mm -hmm. any human <laughs> mm -hmm. in that space that could say something to them where they would hear it from them, but never hear Not it from me? Right. Never Nobody hear else. it from me. Hmm. So though, that's that's the power mapping, not just power analysis. And in a community that is small, that also means your degrees of separation are small. Mm -hmm. Oh, very. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Unbelievably small. So, so how do you get to the people that can have an informal conversation mm -hmm. with some of the people that you want to shift and evolve and, and mm -hmm. do some harm reduction in? How mm -hmm. do you get to those people who can informally get to those people who mm -hmm. might get have enough of a conversation that they're then willing to come talk to someone else or mm -hmm. at least hear proposals, hear things? And then that's another part. You need to have um, and ask <laughs> mm -hmm. that is clear. You know what you're talking about. Listen, right. that is clear and concise and researched to some extent with receipts, as the babies say, right? Mm -hmm. So you need right. to have something with some citations and you need to have um, options of ways and also options of resistance. Here, mm -hmm. are, here are paths forward. Here are paths we are willing to block. Take if right. There is no path if there is no path forward. What can right. you block, barrier, disrupt if mm -hmm. if forward motion is not happening? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I told I totally get that. And I, you know, I was thinking, uh, and we're going to homework after this, but I was thinking about okay, what is that power map for us? Who are the P? How do you get to the people, these convention owners? Mm -hmm. Um, who and who will they listen to? Because they don't listen to us. Not uh, think, think of it as, as a spoke wheels. So that's the homework. Put those people in a circle and make the spoke wheels like a wheel on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Who is directly connected to them? Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't know them either. Okay. Who is directly connected, <laughs> right, connected to those to folks? Because you will need to walk your way up. So mm -hmm. every, everything is not a let's go in front of the White House and right, and sit and down, right, yeah. drop, right like some things are but everything is not that so what mm -hmm. are pathways that you can because because remember the part that they're human mm -hmm. so if you if you can if you can get to the human then you might get a conversation but if right. you're only trying to get to the title to the position then that may be a hard, that's a different barrier. And I'm not saying don't do that either. I'm just saying there are modalities and ways available. Right. Yeah, I, I would love to see some of the other choreographers who have politics around making sure that this stops, mm -hmm. putting pressure on convention owners by saying they're not coming. Yep. Or they won't work alongside people who yep. have exhibited this behavior. So for that, that would mean that either those folks are established enough that they can still feed their families and make this stand, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's gonna be some of those people. But here's the rest. Let's say 
they still need to feed their families this way, then you need to also be able to support, show a way that you can have support and solidarity that you make it so they still feed their families. Families, too. right, yeah. So, so what happens? what happens if you say, hey, we're gonna get three or four dance studios to come together and just do a clinic workshop and we will collectively pay you this amount because you took a stand and right. did not compete in the you did not participate in that convention and see how that becomes solidarity and mutual and reciprocal mm -hmm. and relational and not just all risk right. and all loss for all right. of you so what I hear is homework. We do give homework every week. Homework. We give something you need to do between this Friday and next Friday, which next Friday we're actually on break for spring break. But um, uh, next Friday to uh, make moves in this area, I hear power mapping. You mm -hmm. feel like there should be some power mapping happen happening. So yep. thinking about the person we want to get that conversation started with, the person that we want to, to make to shift. Mm -hmm. and figuring out what the connections are to that person and then what connections we have to those connections or what connections we have to those connections and who, do that power who, map. Who do we want to shift? Mm -hmm. Who can shift them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And that's, then do that's we reach spoke. out to the who we shift them? Do you just say, hey, I'm looking to shift Bobby. Can I get your support on this? Like, what do you say? So that's, that goes to that political education. So there may be a group of people that need to do the writing, that need to, to do some type of abstract, write up what you feel, what you believe, what you have observed, what you would like to change. And when you do that spoke, will spoke power mapping, you're going to, there. you should have enough degrees of separation that somebody does have an actual cell phone number that mm -hmm. they can do that call. It might just not be you. I don't mean you, Melissa. I mean, it might not be you who did the power mapping, but if you do a deep enough job, you will get to a person who can get to the person who can get to the person who mm -hmm. actually has a cell phone number because that's going to be a different call than just writing a letter, than just dropping a petition. And, and the thing is, you almost want some of those things to kind of be happening at the same time because if mm -hmm. some of those calls are happening and then a petition also drops it's mm -hmm. going to register differently because there's multiple motions happening right yeah and mm -hmm. and the, the only thing I would advise against I'm typically you know with goal setting you don't want to make goals that are not going to a place like that's not healthy mm -hmm. goal. that's not um, effective goal setting but what I would avoid is having a hundred petitions circulating because mm -hmm. everybody, everybody jumps up and be like, I can click on a button, button and make a petition. Right. So you would want to, as much as possible, try to use one umbrella to make a petition that has loose enough language that people can enter in is not so rigid that you're giving folks an excuse to opt out. Cause that, cause sadly right, cause they'll take it. We're, yeah, we'll take it. We're looking for that anyway, because we're the humans back to us mm -hmm. being our own human and we're doing our own risk assessment, our own loss assessment. Mm -hmm. um, but lo loose enough language for folks to enter in, do a petition under as much of a recognizable umbrella as possible, like one mm -hmm. good partner, get one good partner who's willing to step out on what is right mm -hmm. for the babies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We have homework too. We always have the same homework each week. Um, make sure you take the steps initiative. That is the uh, six course module um, that uh, prompted and started beyond the steps. So take that. It's totally free. I just popped that link into the chat here on Facebook and I will get it up and running um, in uh, Instagram in just a second. Um, also, our friends at YPAD, Youth Protection Advocates for Dance, uh, they have certifications in this area, how wow. to prevent sex That's abuse perfect. and prevent sex abuse in this space. Please go see, they have courses that are for teachers, courses for parents, courses for uh, convention owners. They do uh, private work as well. Mm -hmm. Go there, check out those courses. You do have a 25% off code, all caps, Apollo 25 to get 25% off those uh, courses. Um, Vahisha uh, can be found at the Hassan MIF. Correct. Yep. On Twitter and Instagram and just yes. my name on Facebook. 
Yes. So if you want to reach out to her, um, you can, please, you can find her on social media there. Um, and also if you're power mapping, you can always get to her through me. Correct. And ditto. Not that, <laughs> not that I will always pass you along. You better come with it. You better come correct whatever you're talking about. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Misha, for joining us. Uh, thank you for being here. Everyone who watched today, this was an amazing show. We will be using this information um, and sending it out to people. So be on the lookout for that in your email box if you are signed up um, for the email list with us. Next week, we are off. It is spring break in most places. So I'm hoping that everyone is finding some time for themselves find them time some time for them fam their families uh, their communities anybody and taking that time to um yeah. to relax a little bit we need to decompress mm -hmm. we need to decompress it's mid competition season we need to woosa and take a moment uh to to care for ourselves we breathe will be back. Y yes breathe <laughs> we will be back april 22nd um to talk about how we can use meditation as a restorative practice here in this space as we get into this mid competition season time. So join us 2 p.m. Eastern time at Apollo Performance on Facebook, at Apollo Performance on um, Instagram as well. Or you can join us on Zoom uh, here if you want to join us on Zoom, info at ApolloPerformance.com um, to sign up and get that Zoom link. Thank you so much. Until next week, we hope you continue your journey beyond the steps. See you soon. Bye-bye. Awesome. Bye-bye, Facebook. See you later.